there are a number of needs-based models of motivation. For example, the well-known Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Clayton Aldifer's existence, relatedness and growth model, and indeed Hertzberg's model is fundamentally a needs-based model. But of those, my own favourite is David McClellan's needs theory. And that's what we'll talk about in this video. To my mind, McClellan's three needs is the most practical of the models of motivation based on needs for us as working managers. To illustrate it, I'm going to take an example. Let's say that you are a middle manager in an organization and you need to reallocate personnel. And let's say you need to add three people to your sales team. How can you use McClellan's three needs to motivate those three people to leave their current postings and to join the sales team? Let's assume that none of them is keen initially to get involved in sales and none of them has significant experience in sales. What McClellan says is that we each have three primary needs in the workplace. The need for achievement, the need for power, and the need for affiliation. What he goes on to say is that each of us has a different balance of those three needs, and for most of us, one of those needs will predominate. The more you get to know the people in your team and the resources available to you, the better you will understand which needs motivate each of those people. If you understand what need primarily drives an individual, then you can tailor the way you motivate them to match their primary need. So let's start with Faisal. Faisal is primarily motivated by a need for achievement. What this means is that he feels that achieving something worthwhile makes him feel uplifted and great and positive and powerful. And therefore, he is going to be highly motivated to anything that gives him that sense of achievement. And it's important to note that therefore, setting fines or tasks that he considers too easy are not going to motivate him. Because if it's easy, then achieving it doesn't give any great sense of achievement. Likewise, he's also not going to be motivated by any task that he sees as too difficult because there is too great a risk that he won't achieve anything. Now, luckily, knowing that Faisal is motivated by achievement, you can frame your request for him to join the sales team in terms of achievement because you can assure him that sales is the achievement focused part of any business. It's achievement focused because you are set a task to make a sale and you have a clear achievement when you do make that sale. This is not a straightforward task, so there is definitely a sense of achievement to be had, but it is also one that is entirely manageable. You can set Faisal specific sales targets which are manageable with the training he gets, and then as his skill increases, so you can set him higher and higher targets so that he can work on more and more challenging proposals and sales processes and increase his sense of achievement. But at no point will you put him onto a sales effort that he is not prepared for and therefore able to achieve. So for a salesperson, achievement is a great motivator. And therefore, for someone like Faisal, who is motivated by achievement, sales is the ideal posting. But what about Hetal? Hetal is not motivated by achievement. She is far more motivated by power. She wants to get things done and she wants to be seen as someone who is important. For her, sales is the ideal role because what is more important in an organization than sales? If we don't make sales, the organization ceases to be able to function. With no revenue, no sales, there's no money and the organization could go bankrupt. Salespeople are held in high esteem. They are lauded and you can rise through the ranks within the sales organization to lead sales teams, eventually become a sales director and possibly take a seat on the board. For someone who wants power in an organization, sales 
is an ideal platform to build that power base. But what about Goron? Goron isn't interested in power and neither does he want achievement. For him, what's important is affiliation. And affiliation is about building relationships. It's about being part of something, affiliated to something. For Goran, what really motivates him is feeling like he's part of a group, a successful group, ideally, but certainly a cohesive group. So how does sales work for Goran? It works very well because, of course, sales isn't a solo effort. Any salesperson who thinks of themselves as a road warrior who goes out and does it all alone is kidding themselves in the, the modern world. Because sales is a truly collaborative effort. Not only are they sales teams that split up territories and work together to create sales to big clients, but sales is an integrated part of any organization. You can't be successful in sales unless you work with and understand the work of the marketing team, the product development team, the customer support team. Sales is, if you like, the hub of the ultimate relationship based network. And then, of course, there's the relationships you build with your clients and your customers and your prospects. So salespeople have the ability to become almost a part of their client organizations. If you sell well and your client comes to respect your product and like your style as a salesperson, they will include you in their planning and you will feel part of their team, too. So if you want affiliation, be part of a sales team. Now, if you've ever worked in sales or if you know anyone who's worked in sales, you'll quickly be able to establish that I have not lied to Faisal, to Hetal or to Goran. It is absolutely true that sales is about achievement. It is absolutely true that salespeople rise through the organization if they're successful and have respect and power. And it's absolutely true that sales is a collaborative effort where you build relationships, not just with your clients and your customers, but also with your colleagues around the organization. I've spoken absolute truth, but I have selected which aspects of the role will appeal to each of my three colleagues. By knowing which needs motivate the most, I select how I present the opportunity and which elements of the opportunity I emphasize. And that, for me, is what makes David McClellan's theory of needs supremely valuable in day to day motivation of colleagues at work. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come. So please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.